Hi, my name is Rune, and this is the second part of the Emacs Studio 1.1 feature presentation. In this part of the presentation, I'll be taking a look at the new effects added in Emacs Studio 1.1, the timed action system, and the shockwave flash holder scaling and dynamic scaling possibilities included in this version. So to begin off, I'll start with uh, demonstrating some of the new effects that were added in this version. Now, uh, to showcase this, I'll use an image holder plugin. Um, which I'll place on the background of my Emac. Now my intention here is to create a company logo with a slight rollover effect uh, created with a simple image. So I'll simply take logo PNG here, which is uh, basically our company logo that I downloaded from the Emac Studio website. Uh, as you can see, that's coming up here. I now have that in the toolbox. So I'll just make that uh, snap to the lower left corner of my screen here, get it nicely aligned. And now I'd like that to actually, uh, if it's clicked, I'd like it to go to our website. And I'd like it to show a little rollover effect to uh, mark the fact that this is, uh, this is an interactive item. So you can see here, I'll take, uh, I'll take the mouse over event on the image object. I'll go in here and I select the new effects and animations group. And inside that, I pick the add effect action. So now you can see I'm presented with a preview of uh, the logo, and I can add blur effects and glow effects uh, from the effects palette over here. So you can see here now I can preview the blur effect. If I want uh, to change how it animates, I can I can change the values here. Uh, to see now you can see it's faster, slower, and I can change the amount of blur in the animation. In this case, I think I want to use the glow effect uh, since I think it's more suitable for my purpose. So I'll take uh, some bluish color that matches the um, that matches the company style a little bit, something like this, and then I'll uh, tone it down to have a slightly less powerful effect, a little less there, and uh, I think that's good. So I'll click the add button. So now I added this effect to the logo and I can preview it here. Then I click finish and I just want uh, this effect to go away when the user rolls the mouse out again. So I'll click the mouse out event. I'll go into effects and animation. I'll pick the remove all effects. So now if I click preview, as you can see here, I can roll over the logo and I get a slight glow effect on it. I actually might want that to be a little more powerful. But I can easily adjust that by just clicking the add effect uh, item that I added before. Pick the assist existing glow um, that I already added and just inc increase the alpha and maybe increase the amount a little bit of that. So uh, I'll click finish. Let's see how that works out. That's better. And uh, now you can see the glow is coming. So uh, then I could go ahead and add some mouse click event on it. Like maybe say I wanted to go to the Emacs Studio website. So let's say open external link. Um, and I'll make it go to emacrate.com. There we go. This would probably look a little nice if I put a background in here. So uh, let's just go add background image. Go. This should be a little more suitable. See, it looks a little better. And I preview again, and I can see I get the hand cursor to mark that this is a linked item. And when I roll over it, I get a slight blur effect or a slight glow effect on the edges of it. And as you can see, it actually uses the transparency of the PNG image. So using assets imported from Photoshop in this case is very easy. Okay, that's the first part, uh, the new effects possibilities. Now I'll be showing you some of the uh, new timed actions which has become possible in this version. Now to use those, I need to select the uh, document. This can be done by clicking outside the stage area. I go into the, um, to the events of the document and you can now see I have an event called timer finished. Now this is uh, basically the trigger for any timer that's created. So what I need to do now is to create a timer and then catch it using the timer finished event. Now, uh, let's say I just want to create a really basic timer here that starts when the Emac is started up. So I'll take the Emac loaded event. I'll go into the advanced actions and I'll pick the create timer action. Now I could call this timer something like uh, notify 
and set it to have some kind of duration. Let's say in this case uh, 10 seconds, so it's easy for me to test. I'll click finish. Now, uh, when 10 seconds has elapsed, this timer called notified is going to fire, and then I can attach any kind of uh, action to that. So now I'll click the uh, timer finished, and I'll say when timer called notify is finished, then I would like, let's say, maybe a message to pop up or maybe a banner. In this case, I think I'll take a, I'll take a flash file and a window. So I'll go get uh, one of our banners from the uh, website. And let's say I want to say, um, you can get support. I want people to know they can get support within 10 seconds of starting my Emac. So I'll click Finish, and I click Preview. And now we'll just have to wait 10 seconds for the timer to trigger. And there we go. So after 10 seconds, a uh, flash file is open in a window saying ready to help. Um, now, of course, as you can imagine, this could be the system can be used to create more or less any form of interactivity you want. Uh, it could be used to uh, pop up a series of ads like this. It could be used to um, automatically flip the pages of your Emac. You can pop up messages. Uh, a lot of other interesting things. I can show you another funny example here. If I remove the open shuffle flash action, say timer finished, uh, notify, and then maybe uh, let's say this was a subscription I wanted to manage, I could say a display message. And I could edit the HTML saying uh, you need a subscription. And the interesting thing here is I could then go and uh, I could then go and actually disable the Emac. Um, so people wouldn't be able to read any further. So I'll, I'll disable the camp close here, and I'll say freeze Emac. And um, when I preview this, you'll see that uh, after elapsing 15 seconds, a message will pop up saying, in this case, you need a subscription, but you could have added any type of HTML text inside that box. And uh, in this case, I won't actually be able to continue reading my Emac. So uh, I'll need to refresh this page to continue reading. So this is, a, this is a nice way of limiting uh, what can be read inside your Emac, and this could be combined with some kind of limiter on the uh, amount of pages you let people read, or the amount of pages actually included in the Emac. So uh, I'll go ahead and delete these events now, so they won't interfere with uh, the further demonstration. Uh, now the next temp thing I wanted to show is the new uh, Shuffle Flash Holder possibilities in this version. Now uh, in this case I think it would be Kind of fun to create a little uh, flash banner on top of my publication. So I'll just take the uh, document view here. I'll scale it down a little bit to have some space on top. So maybe something like that. And we'll just move it down, say, maybe 20 pixels. Something like that. There we go. And then I'd like to actually add a banner on top of that. So now I'll go take my shuffle flash holder, uh, put it on the background layer, and I'll add a new object like this, and I'll go pick one of our company banners again. So you can see if I take, uh, take one of the other here, and there we go. And now I just need to scale it down. And uh, that's actually a new feature of Emacs 3.1.1 is the ability to load in flash files and scale them uh, once I have them in. So I'm going to reduce the size of this uh, slightly and I'll put it over my publication. So I just want, uh, just want my publication down a little further here. So I'll just put this to 30 pixels. 40, and I'll take my take my flash animation here on the background, and now I'll take the anchoring tool and I'll actually link this um, to the document view to the publication. So now if I scale it to, let's see, this is a little easier to see if I actually flip it to page two because then I can see the full width. So maybe I would like this to take up most of the size of the, um, of the publication, and I want it to scale down dynamically if the publication scales down. So 
I'll set it to something like that. And then I'll set the width, the height of it, to scale to the parent. So in this case, you can see once I click preview, I actually get a flash banner that follows the publication. And if I, um, if I reduce the size of my window here, then the uh, banner will actually follow the size. So this is a new feature in, uh, in this version, is the ability to, uh, to dynamically scale the flash content uh, on the stage of your flash blue. Now this concludes the second part of the Emacs Studio 1.1 feature presentation. I hope that you enjoyed listening and that you are more informed about uh, the new advancements of the Emacs Studio 1.1 publishing platform.